All right, so let's do some more examples. Let's, uh, um, so this is EE220D, uh, lecture three. And let's, let's just take a battery. You all have seen batteries. There's a plus terminal and a minus terminal. I'm gonna put the battery in like this, okay? Then I'm going to go over through a wire to a resistor. And I call that resistor R. And you probably have made a resistor. Maybe when you were younger, you take a pencil and you scribble on the side of a piece of paper. And then on one side, you put a paper clip. And on the other side, you put another paper clip. You try to conduct current through that scribble. That's a resistor. You can then move the two paper clips closer together. What happens to the resistance? goes down. You have less resistance for the, I mean, it's that simple. Let me make sure I'm recording. Okay. So, I'm going to just put a reference on here of ground. How much current will flow into ground? Zero. It's just for reference. Okay. So now I'm going to say this is three volts. It's a three volt battery. This is my reference. So in reference, it's zero. This node here is what voltage? Is it 3? It's minus 3. So let's make sure we understand that. So if you ask, what's the potential between two nodes? Let's say that this is node A and this is node B. The potential between VA to VB, VAB, just shorthand for VA minus VB, is equal to... VA minus, and what's VB here? VB is what? Zero. It's my reference. But what is, I've got a potential between there. What is VA minus VB? Three. Uh, it's minus three. <laughs> and so VA is equal to this. So let's let's do it this way. Let's just verify that. Let's look at it another way. Let's use that same exact equation, except I'm going to call this node VC and this node VD. And so what is VDC, which is VD minus VC? That one's 3, right? So I'm just doing the same thing in different ways. The only reason it's minus 3 here is because this node's grounded, and then the electrons want to flow. Well, we draw the current flowing backwards, flow like of electron flow. Because remember, the electrons are actually going the opposite direction, just to confuse you. Okay? <laughs> um, and so uh, that's the direction of the current flow. So this one is a negative potential. We can think of that as attracting the electron or pulling the current this way. Okay, questions. So this would be like a suction. You're pulling the current this way. And if I flipped it around and made that my ground, I could also think of that as being a, uh, uh, a blower. Okay, this is how I connect my leaf blower. If I uh, connect it so the minus side is ground, then I'm blowing out. And if I want to pick up my leaves, I flip it around, flip the bag around, then I get the leaves coming back in with the negative suction. Does this make sense? I don't think it does, so we're going to do more examples. <laughs> Before we do that, what am I going to do next? The current. So I'm going to be confusing. right? This is about as simple a circuit as you can have because it's two elements. I'm going to say the current is this direction, and I know because I'm learning, I write V equals I times R, Ohm's law, or I can write I equals V over R. So then I say, okay, well, if I draw the current going like this, I'm talking about a battery voltage like this. Because Ohm's law, current like this I, voltage across the resistor V, then R equals V over I. You see how the tail or the head here goes to the minus and this side goes to the plus? Okay, makes sense? So now, what is this voltage, VA minus VB? What is 
this one's always ground, so it's basically what is the potential here? Minus 3. So what is the current? Let's say this is 1K. I equals minus 3 volts over 1K, which is minus 3 milliamps. So what's another way of drawing that? I could do this. I could say, oh, it's 3 milliamps going up that direction. Or it's minus 3 milliamps going this direction. Confusing? So let's just sim stop since we want to simulate. And let's simulate this circuit. Any questions on this? Okay, so let's go and let me make sure I'm consistent. Uh, let's do this. Rename version 3. And let's go. Should we delete everything in this or leave everything there? Let's delete everything. What do you guys want? Yeah, I've got the version 2 online already with everything in there and version 1 online already with everything we did there. Delete. All right. So let's go start LT Spice here. Go to File. Has anybody used LT Spice? Let me ask you this. One person, two? Come on. Oh, okay, a few. All right. New schematic. Now, first thing I'm going to do in a new schematic is I'm going to do a file, save as, and I'm going to go to the desktop. And I'm going to go to 220D, and I'm going to call this schematic EX1 for video 3. Now, I'm going to come up. Where do I get my voltage source? Components. So go to components, voltage. That's not the direction I want, so I can do this. Flip it around. I'm going to make another circuit just because I want to live it up today. I'm going to make that circuit look like this. Hit Escape. Then I'm going to go grab a resistor, right-click on the resistor, change its value to 1K. Make this voltage 3. I'm going to make this voltage, ah, uh, you know what, I want the the V1 and V2 to be on the same side. So I'm going to grab this big hand, grab this, and then I'm going to do a control E. How do I know to use control E? Lower left corner. If I hit control E, flips it around, drop it back. Then I'm going to change the voltage here to minus 3. Just want to be confusing. Looking good? All right, so I'm going to go up here and grab the old resistor, pull it down. Then I'm going to grab my wire, and let's pull it over here, and so forth. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to go poke the running man, which is what the author of LT Spice calls it, which is run the simulation. And what's going to happen? What's that? It's not going to work, right? Yeah, no ground. Oh, it says do something. I'm going to put dot op. Okay, so I'll do, oh, circuit does not have a path to ground. So let's go press G or push ground in there, and let's just to be different, put a ground there. Go connect there. Go connect there. If I right-click on this node and highlight it, what happens? Both of them are connected. So this is my lazy way of not doing this, right? But it's the same exact thing. Okay. Let's get the scissors. Cut it. Now, I want to do one other thing because I like making things very clear. I want to label the nodes. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say this is V1, or let's call it just to be different. What did I call it here? VA. Let's drop it up here. And let's go ahead and right click. Now, if I were to sim, what do you think would happen? I got a negative 3 volt source and a 3 volt source. But you know what? Let's see. I'm not going to hurt anything. 
Voltage source V1 and voltage source V2 are in parallel, making an overdefined circuit matrix. In other words, it doesn't work. So I'm going to right click on that, set this to B. Yay? Okay, so now run. Now, before I look at this, let's go look here, make sure I understand the uh, SPICE net list. What's the first line? First line's a comment. Spice always, there's all kinds of different spices. There's LT spice, there's wind spice, there's H spice, there's, I mean, there's 50 different spice programs, but all of them ignore the first line in the net list. So if you decide to type the net list in yourself and you put something relevant in the first line, you will be frustrated. Okay, and you might have to if you ever become a chip designer because we type net lists all the time and then copy other things and put it in. But I have a voltage source with the positive node connected at ground and the negative node connected at VA. Voltage source, V1. Positive node is ground, that's the zero. Negative side is connected to VA. Notice how I understand what VA is because I labeled it. If I didn't put that in, it would put something like N0001 or something like that. And I'd be like, what is that in the schematic? Okay. And I've got another source, V2, from VB to 0. Okay, VB to 0. And then I have a resistor from VA to ground and from VB to ground. Okay, we ready to look at the results? Let's run the sim again. And I don't want to look at that. Let's go ahead and look at VA. Just put my cursor over. And it says DC operating point via VA is minus 3 volts. I go down here, VB. Via VB is minus 3 volts. Exact same circuits. And one I used a positive source and the other I used a negative source. Then I look at the currents through here. Current through R1, minus 3. Current through R2, minus 3. Let me confuse things. Let's get this big hand. Do a control R. Run the sim. Now I look through here. Now the current's positive 3. Why? Just flip the resistor around so the plus and minus nodes on the resistor are positive. So let's go ahead and move that back. And you tell me from last time, if I now look at the currents through these two sources, what's the current through this one? What does SPICE define positive current flow as? Yeah, from plus to minus is positive current flow. So what do you think is going to happen here? What's, which way is the current going to flow in this circuit? Yeah, I've got this one I've got, well, both of these I've got my... Uh, my leaf blower configured to, to pick up the leaves, and so when I connect it to my leaves, this thing, I pull the leaves in, it flows like this, correct? And so the current's going to flow from minus to plus, so if I look at that and I ask, what's the current flowing in there? Why is it not showing me what the current? Oh, because I've got the uh, hand showing. When I look at the current, it's going to say minus 3 because it's flowing from minus to plus. Same thing here. Except now my current, since I've got a minus voltage, is flowing from plus to minus, and it's positive 3. Okay, I hope I'm boring you. Am I? <laughs> All right, so let's hit save. Any questions on those two circuits? Yeah. Oh, so dot .op, if I right-click on that. So notice I didn't put that in. I just pressed this thing. And then it ran, it said, what kind of analysis? So OP means operating point, DC operating point. So I could also go do a transient and set the stop time at one second. If I did that and I hit run, then I would have to probe the voltages. And since they're DC, they're just going to be constant lines. So then the current would show up over here as minus 3, current, etc. Then how do I save the plots? Select the plot window and hit the floppy. Boom. Okay, so now 
I say yes, save this, I go into my little folder here, you go home, you say I want to try that out, you hit run and everything automatically plots. Questions? All right, so let's change it something a little more complicated. This schematic, are there, I want you when you're learning this stuff, if you haven't already, I want it to be like, make sense, very simple. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, so I'm going to make the circuits a little bit more complicated. Let's uh, put a current source here. And let's say this current source is 1 milliamp. Let's put a resistor here. Let's put, I'm going to make sure I close the circuit because I'm so used to being lazy and just drawing this going down to ground. Let's put a source here of uh, 4K and let's say 5 volts. And I want you to analyze this circuit and then simulate it in SPICE. So I'm going to ask you, I'm the king of trivial questions, so don't think I'm trying to trick you. What's the current that flows in the circuit? Yeah, one milliamp. There's a source there that's forcing one milliamp in the circuit. Of course, I can't have two current sources in series because only unless they're the same value because one current source forces the current. I'm going to call this node V, let's call it VB, and this node VA. Now I'm going to ask you, what is VB? Five volts. Remember, anytime someone asks you what the voltage is on a node that's connected to a voltage source, your brain shuts off and thinks, you're not challenging me. It's the voltage. Okay, it's five volts. I'm going to ask you, what is VA minus VB? VAB. VA minus VB. And let me just draw my little resistor here, my current I, and then plus minus V. Now, I'm doing this different ways. This is Ohm's law. When you draw a current through there, you draw plus minus where your arrow is at the minus, and then you write until it's burned into your head, V equals IR or I equals V over R. Until you just know it second hand. Because now I'm going to ask, in terms of what is VAB equal to here? One of these, which one? I know the current, I know the resistance, what is it? Yeah, you're getting ahead of me, but that's right. For I times 4K, or 1 milliamp times 4K, which is 4 volts. VA minus VB equals 4 volts, but what is VB? 5. So, what is the pressure VA? 9 volts. Did everybody get that? Okay, key points. You see a current source in the circuit, you don't think deep. Every place where that current is connected that's in series that there are no branching or splitting of the current, you know what the current is. You write it down. It's one milliamp. Every place where you see a voltage source connected to ground, you write down what the voltage is at the other side of the voltage source. It's not connected to ground. Here, this is 5 volts. If I flipped it around, it'd be minus 5. You start that out and you write it on the schematic and then you use that to guide you. If you have resistors, you draw the current flowing through the resistor and then you say, oh, V of 4K, let me give you an example. I pick the current flowing this way, and I'm going to call this V4K, and I know that V4K equals I times R. I keep consistent with this. If they flip it around, and they write, oh no, I is flowing like this, and then they show you 
plus minus, then you know V of 4K is equal to minus I times R because you know this arrow and this arrow are exactly the same. They're just related by a minus sign. No confusion. So if they tell you a certain way that's backwards from what you're used to, you just simply put a minus for the I. Let's simulate this one. Any questions? Okay, so let's go over here. Let's grab our nice little schematic. Let's go file, save as. Uh, let's call it example two. Let's get out the scissors, cut this, get out the big hand, flip this dude around, control R, control E, plop it back. Oh, whoops, let's not do that. Let's get out scissors here and cut this because it's a different circuit. Grab the big hand, control R it, go here to the components, go to current, and let me see. My current's going up like this, so I could either put a minus one milliamp or I could flip the current source around, right? So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to do this because I like to match the, but I know I could just leave it the way it was and put a minus, but I don't know how good the grader is in this class, so I don't want to lose points because I didn't put the exact schematic the grader wanted to see. Graders are hit and miss. <laughs> they can ruin your life. <laughs> All right. Unless you don't care about grades, then it's probably fine. So what was the shortcut key for uh, putting a ground down? G. And let's put it, uh, let's do this control. Uh, it doesn't let me flip it around. Ah, let's put it like that. And let's grab this, come up here. Let's right click, ah, let's do a little different. Let's put one, milli one milliamp. And this voltage source was five volts. And let's call this V, just to be consistent, VB. And let's pause and look at the uh, net list. Notice I've got these N002, N001. I don't like that. I'm going to go back because I'm OCD. I'm going to call this VB so that it matches. Plop this down, making sure if I do that, that I immediately go back because I'll get really frustrated when I'm simulating and it doesn't match my hand calculations. Am I good to go? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. We would have made... I did that on purpose. I was going to make a mistake. No. <laughs> okay. 4K. Save. Run. Uh, what do we want to do? Dot OP or... A uh, transient operating point or transient let's do OP and eh, I don't want to look at that I like pointing and seeing what's going on so let's see what VA is I calculated nine shows me nine if I'm turning in my homework what I might want to do is do this I might want to run the sim and then take my snipping tool which is in accessories and make sure I'm on rectangular snip and just grab this and then paste this with my little, oh, there's my output. I might want to circle it so it's easy on the grader. And then paste it into my homework. And then come back and then copy this and paste it in as well. Just to be nice. It takes two seconds. It's easier than hand drawing it. Okay, so now what was the other thing? I had uh, this node, which uh, was uh, 5 volts, and then the current through here is 1 milliamp, and if it was negative, I would know to do what? Flip the resistor around. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, so if I grounded this part... That's here. It says this is ground. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? 
All right. So let me just point out, if I imagine a person standing here, standing on ground, and they touch this node, they complete the circuit, and the circuit flows back through them, up through ground to the source. In that situation, you will get current on ground. That's why you have ground fault interrupters that we talked about last time. Okay? Does that make sense? In this circuit, where there are no other paths, no current can flow on the ground. Is it clear? Okay, so I want to make a little bit more challenge, a couple more challenging circuits. Then I want to do a voltage control voltage source because that's probably the first dependent source. And I'm going to say this word again so you think about it. This one is an independent source because it's one milliamp. This is an independent source because it's five volts. But I can have dependent sources which say, hey, take this voltage, multiply it by five, and that's the voltage over here. And that's a, a dependent source. Okay. Any questions on this circuit? Okay, so let's close this, go back here, and let's make up another circuit. This one has one loop. The current that flows is constant in the whole loop. Let's make one with two loops. Let's live it up. Because you probably won't see those for quite a little while, but I want you to not be afraid of them when you see them. So let's... I'm, and I'm just trying to pick arbitrary circuits here. So let's say this is 4K. Let's say we have a battery, minus, plus. And let's say the battery here is 5 volts. And let's say we go to another resistor. And let's say this resistor is 5K. And then let's say we go to a current source. And let's say this current source is 2 milliamps. Okay, so on this one, how much current flows in here? Where does that water come from then? This is a pipe, right? It's one milliamp or two milliamps, right? How much current flows up here? Two milliamps. It's the same pipe. But if I come back and ask you how much current flows in the 5K, you say, I have no idea because I don't. I can't look at this and say I have an idea for what the current that flows in the 5K is. How much current flows over here? I don't know. The only place I know is this one. I haven't done any analysis. If I ask, what's the voltage here? Don't know. Let's call it V1. If I ask, what's the voltage here? Don't know. The only time I have 5 volts is if one side of that voltage source is connected to ground and the other side is forcing the node voltage. This side's not. i got a pipe here with water flowing in it. I don't know what that voltage is. And that's okay. I'm looking at the only thing I know is there's 2 milliamps flowing there. So I'm going to call this pressure, or this voltage, V2. So all I did was I said, this voltage is V1, this voltage is V2. Okay, so now what do I know? If I label the voltage here, what would it be? I'm the king of trivial questions, so what is the voltage across that 5K? I can't hear too well. What? Well, wait, what is this voltage? Yeah, so what's the voltage across here? Yeah, it's V2. Think of it in terms of like air pressure. This is all the same pressure, right? If I ask you, what's the pressure right here? V2. If I ask you, what's the pressure here? Zero. If I ask you, what's the pressure here? Zero. What's the pressure here? Zero. What's the pressure here? V1, what's the pressure across that resistor? V1, what's the pressure across this voltage source? 5, what if I label it like this? Negative 5, it doesn't confuse me. Questions? Make sense? And I'm trying to make sure, because you get not used to this, but once you make the physical connection that, oh, this is just the same pressure 
anywhere along there, it's less confusing. Remember last time I talked about how you can, in your mind, think about moving the elements around. For me, that was really helpful. So I think about how would I wire that up? Oh, well, that's got to be the same if I put this here and move this over here. It'd be the same exact circuit. Sometimes it's nice to think of it that way because it moves things closer to where you feel more comfortable. All right, questions? Okay, so now, remember, I'm the king of trivial questions. What is this current here? Let's call it I sub 5K. Oh, I don't remember, so I'm going to draw my little circuit and not feel bad about it. The voltage across is like this. The current is through here. So V equals IR, or I equals V over R. And I do this, and I write it on my problem, simply so I get used to seeing plus, minus, and the arrow pointing in this direction where the head is at the minus sign. So now I ask, what is I of 5K? V2 over 5K. Any questions? What is this current here? Let's call it I of 4K. V1 over 4K. What is, are there any questions there? So if I ask you now, before I go on, because we can keep analyzing this circuit, but I want to pause for a moment. If I ask you, 2 milliamps flows into the node, what currents flow out? I of 5K and I of 4K. If I ask you, what's the current flowing in this voltage source? What's the current flowing in the 5 volts? What I always ask trivial questions. What is it? I of 4K. If I say, how is 2 milliamps related to the current through the 5K and the current through the voltage source of the current through the 4K? Does everybody agree with that? Would everybody agree then that point zero zero two equals V2 over 5K plus V1 over 4K? When I just did this and I summed the currents, what was that called? Kirchhoff's current law. I did a KCL at that node. Okay, I'm going to write one more equation, then I'm going to write one. We have one, one equation and two unknowns, so we can't solve it, right? So I'm going to multiply both sides by K. I'm going to do this slow. 2 equals V2 over 5 plus V1 over 4. Would everybody agree with that? Would everybody be okay if I wrote, I'm going to multiply both sides by 20, and I get 40, 40 equals 4V2 plus 5V1? Yay or nay? Okay. Okay, so I still have this one equation, two unknowns. So let me pause. Put a box around it. What's the other equation I could write here? Well, I could write a KVL, but I need to keep it simple because if it's not simple, I don't want to get bogged down in algebra. What is it? Yeah, so I could write V2, I'm going to write it two different ways, V2 minus V1. The voltage here, V2 1, V2 minus V1 equals what? This voltage minus this voltage. This pressure minus this pressure, 5. Well, let's say I didn't. I wrote it V1 2, which is V1 minus V2. This voltage is V1. Minus this voltage is V2, gives me. And you can see from the math, but whenever you see a voltage source, 
this voltage on the positive side minus the voltage on the negative side is the voltage of the voltage source. When one side is connected to ground like it is here, it's VB minus 0 equals 5 or VB equals 5. Yay? Okay. So I write this V1 minus V uh, equals V2. So this would be a great place where we could throw together a little two by two matrix and solve it. It's a little bit, <laughs> it's like pounding in a nail with a sledgehammer, a little bit <laughs> too much effort. So uh, I'll do it nice and slow. I'll write V2 equals 5 minus V1. Or, whoops, plus V1. Okay. And then I can write 40 equals 20 plus uh, 4V1. You guys are getting ahead of me. Plus 5V1. Or V1 equals 20 over 9, which is 2 and 1 ninth volts. So that's uh, like 0 0.111. So I think that's uh, 2.11, something like that. We'll find out in a second. What is it? Oh, two ninths? Oh, sorry. Yeah. How's that? All right. And what's V2? Looking good? Any questions? This is, uh, these are called mesh. When you're learning these, these are called mesh uh, loops because this current in this 5K flows in this loop and in this loop. So you're probably going to do lots of those in this class. Okay. So just, you have one right there. Okay. Any questions? So we ready to sim it? 4K5, let's see if I can remember. So let's go over here. Do file, save as, um, example three. And let's see, we got a, and let's just get the scissors out here. Cut, 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 cut. And let's get rid of this. And then uh, you guys keep a mental picture of the figure. And uh, of the circuit. Nice and messy. And then let's grab our 4K. Get the big hand. Move it over here. Do control R. Plop it down. Grab my ground. Go up. Everybody can do this this uh, drafting, right? You guys, when I you take classes from me, my one of my policies is no electronics because you got to stop paying attention and you miss something important. But that's okay. It's not my class. <laughs> but ask all my students. I'm a hard ass, man. I see them playing in there. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Right in the back row. <laughs> all right. You know why I do that? Because I can't pay attention. When I'm texting or I'm working on the computer, I can't. I got to pay attention to my text. I don't pay attention to what's going on. So, and I think everybody's like me. So, <laughs> some people can do the multitasking. All right. Uh, let's do a copy. And then let's put a 5K here. And then 2 milliamps. And let's be lazy this time. Let's press G. Go down here. It's probably better not to do this when you're learning because it's hard to imagine the uh, the loops connecting when you're writing your loop around. Let's do this. And I'm not going to do it. I don't want you to not follow when you have this example. What's the last thing I'm going to do? What is it? 
Yeah, name the nodes. I'm like the king of repeating myself. So that'll be V1. Boom. And V2. I always like just putting them down and then relabeling instead of it's a little less clicking. All right, hit save. Quest Jonies. What's, oh yeah, thank you. We'd have some uh, 10,000 volts. Because 2 times 5K is 10,000 volts. Or 10,000 volts, rather. So let's hit this. Let's move this dude up here. Yeah, let's put it here. And then uh, let's look at our solution because I like nothing succeeds like success. So let's V1 was, uh, oh, you know what? And we could calculate the currents too. Just go back and plug in the numbers. I don't, let's just look at V1 and V2. V1 was two and two nights. V2 was 7.22. So hit run. Don't look at that. V1 was 2.2222. And V2, obviously, it's going to be 5 volts higher. It's going to be 7.2222. Okay? And we could then look at the currents here if we wanted to, etc. One other thing, I'm not going to talk about it much in uh, the uh, in this little lecture series but there's you know power everybody's familiar with the power company right when we look at voltage you think of pressure when you look at current you think of like flow like water flow or air flow power is the product of the pressure and the flow so if you have just a pressure like here I have just a pressure let's say I cut the the node here so that no water's flowing through it there's no power dissipated there okay the only time I get power dissipation is when I'm driving a pressure and a flow through something. So here I get a power dissipation by that resistor. It's 10.48. It's just VI, current times the voltage, 10.43 milliwatts, okay, voltage times current. These things right here, they have a voltage and a current, but I want to point something out to you. If you look at the way current flows through this, if you look at it in terms of, and let's do it on the next page, because this is kind of an advanced thing you never really cover, but it's kind of a uh, something interesting to know. If you look at the resistor, if you look at the resistor, you have this, plus minus V, and then I, and then V equal, and this is a resistor, V equals uh, IR, and power, power equals I times V, okay? If I look at a voltage source, if I look at the current that flows through a voltage source, let's just say I connect it to a resistor, the current really doesn't flow like this, right? The current really flows like this. And so if I calculate the power, I get voltage times a negative current. What that means is whenever you have negative power, like a voltage source or a current source, it means you're supplying power to the sort to the circuit. So if you use this plus minus and the current flowing like this, plus minus and the current flowing like this, and you find out here, well, the current's actually flowing backwards, you get a negative current, and that a negative power indicates a source of energy. It's your supplying power to the circuit. Does that make sense? So you'll cover that in class, but it's like you have a simple example is if I get my meter out, I got one up in my office drawer, and I check the voltage coming out of the wall, I'll measure 120 volts plus or minus 3 volts. That's what the power company tries to regulate it at. If I ask you how much power is being supplied, the answer is zero. There's no load connected to it, so no power is being supplied, but there's still a pressure. So can you have voltage without current flow? Can you have a voltage with I equal to zero? What happens if there's no load there? What is R? What is your resistance? Infinite. So if I goes to zero and R is infinite, you can still have a pressure. So the answer is yes, you can have voltage without current flowing. Okay? You'll know there's voltage there when you go put your finger in there and get shocked because the voltage will come out and complete the circuit through your body. Okay, then you'll be a load and power will be dissipated. 
Okay, so if anybody argues and say, no, you can have voltage, Ohm's law isn't ma match, then you say, oh, really? Put your finger in there. Well, it doesn't instantaneously. It's got to travel the, the energy. All right, let's do one more. Uh, we got eight minutes left, right? Eight and a half. Um, let's do one more, and I'm going to introduce a voltage-controlled voltage source, okay? Yes. So, no. So say you have a battery. Okay. Yeah. So here, if I ask, say I have 1.5 volt battery for your remote control on your car. If you have a 1.5 volt battery and you just pull it out of the, the key remote, and you hold it there, you just, you know, grab one side of it. You don't have anything connected between the two leads, right? So you could think of that as being a infinite valued resistor. So if you ask how long, assuming the battery doesn't degrade, how long can this battery stay there when it's not supplying any power? The answer is indefinitely, right? Because here, I equals zero, R equals infinity. So 1.5 equals I going to zero, Y R is going to infinity. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you still have a pressure there. You still have a potential but nothing, no currents flowing, and you don't realize that potential until you complete the load and you get shocked if you put your finger there. If you think of it in terms of the battery being a long distance away, if you connect wires a long distance away, once you connect, when you connect the battery, it takes a finite amount of time, the speed of light at the fastest rate for that voltage signal to propagate to where you are, okay? If you're sitting there and you just touch, you're not going to have the, the voltage propagate some, from some real far distance all the way over. It'll take a long time. The voltage is already there. Does that make sense? Okay, it's sitting there. The pressure's already. It's like if you have power, if you have air compressor tools in your garage and you've got an elaborate system, well, you don't have to wait for the air to travel through the pipes. The end of the pipe's pressurized just like at the front. Okay, that pressure's all through the pipe. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're just waiting for you to go hit your, you know, your your drill or whatever, and you know it works because the pressure is already there. Just no power is being used because you're not using any airflow. Does that make sense? I don't. What I'm getting at is I don't want you to take all these concepts and think they're really complicated because they're not. They're very simple. Going through and looking at how to attack a problem like this. Now that can get complicated and you need to practice it. But actually knowing, oh, the potential between here and here is 5 volts, that shouldn't challenge you. Or the current that flows here, that's 2 milliamps, that shouldn't be a challenge. Okay, we got 5.6 minutes left, so let's uh, do one more quick example. Something we can finish, and I think I was on slide, uh, actually let's do it here. I just want to do, I want to introduce a new thing today. We know what voltage and current source is. I want to introduce voltage control voltage source. Just real quick. Uh, voltage controlled. Because I don't want, I want this all to be easy to you. Okay, so if I take this circuit, let's say we have a uh, 5 volt battery. And then I go over here. Well, this is where I'm going to say, did they get anything out of last lecture? And I know the answer is going to be, I'm going to be disappointed. But no, I'm not. I have high hopes. What's the potential here? How much pressure is dropped across this relative to this? 2.5, right? Same pressure. It's the same resistance. You got the same current flowing. The pressure dropped across this resistor and the pressure dropped across this resistor have to be the same. So this is 2.5. And what was the equation we went over? The voltage divider. 1K, this resistor, divided by this resistor plus this resistor, times 5. You're going to see voltage dividers over and over again, all right? So let's say I come over and I call this voltage VA. And I go over to this source that looks like this, and I connect one side, which is a voltage source, to ground, and the other side, and I call this V out, and I say this has a gain of 3. 
Then on this side, I connect one side to ground, or whoops, and the other side I connect over here. Let's just connect it to VA, and let's connect all these together. What a voltage control voltage source does is it takes this controlling voltage here, VA, multiplies it times the gain, and makes V out three times VA, or in this case, 7.5 volts. So this is just a voltage source, the plus and minus like I'm used to using. The only difference is it has a gain, and it takes that gain and multiplies it times the difference on the input. So the voltage on the input is 2.5. So the gain is 3, so the output is just going to be 3 times 2.5. So let's throw this circuit together real quick and then quit. Any questions? I just picked an arbitrary gain. could be 4. That's, that's what it does. It says, yeah, no, no, it's a voltage multiplier. It takes, the way you add voltages is you put voltage sources in series. This one, what it does is it says, I'm going to take whatever voltage you apply on my inputs, multiply it times some gain, and that's going to be the voltage I have on my outputs. Okay, so let's see how fast I can do it. Here, let's hit save, close, go back up, file, save as, and let's call it example four. We have three minutes, the stress, it's killing me. Okay, so let's go boom, boom, boom. Okay. Let's get, man, let's just move these out of the way. Control R. Move this up. Control R. Drop this dude down. Drop this one over. Press G. Prop it up. Go to, yeah, let's get rid of the, we don't need these here. Let's move this dude over. Change it to 1K. 1K. Oh, I guess I did. I called it VA, didn't I? Oh, well. Doesn't matter. We won't label a node this time. Oh, you know what? Past performance is the best indication of future performance. I'm so used to not drawing the circuit connected. It's like... All right. And then we go up here, and we go to E. E. There's one that flips the plus and minus inputs. E2 just flips these. Say OK. Let's go ahead and show them connected. So we got our ground here. Let's go here. Let's set the gain to 3. Let's go press G. No, we don't need G. I can't. Like I said, past performance. And then come up here. Let's drag this over. And then I called the output node V out. One minute left. V out. I used to hate it when I was in school and the professor wouldn't stop on time. It'd drive me nuts. I only paid for so much. Stop. <laughs> All right. We calculated V out with 7.5, and there it is. All right. See you next Friday, and I'll put all this on the web so you can download it. Have a good weekend.